The Judeo-Christian faith is divinely incarnational, divine of the essence of God, incarnational, incarnare, Latin, incarnivorous, flesh, incarnational, in flesh. We are divinely fleshed out. That's our faith. We are incarnationally divine and divinely incarnational. This simply means that we find and experience God in one another. We experience God in flesh. Look at the original story. One day, two day, three day, four day, five day, six days over the course. Those early wisdom writers understood that life was somehow created over time, gradually. They didn't get all of the science. They didn't have scientific language. But in a pre-scientific way, there was the intuition that life was a process and that God rolled this thing out through the ages. And then finally, out of the dust of the earth, rising up out of the dust of the earth, out of organic matter, the image of God is so irrepressible that it bubbles up until finally a human being with consciousness reaches toward the sky. Well, back to the story, looking at the story in, it, in, its, in its, its picture, the way it was told, the Bible says that God created a man and he walked with that man for a season of time and one day God looked at that guy and said, it's not good for you to be alone. And this is bigger than marriage. It's far bigger than marriage. God didn't look at the guy and say, it's not good for you to be unmarried. God said, it's not good for you to be alone. Now, if that guy would have been raised in the world that I was raised in, he would have looked at God and said, what do you mean alone? I've got you and you're my everything. At which point, God would have rolled his eyes and said, oh, come on, quit trying to be more spiritual than God. <laughs> Listen, God described a human being with God as alone. You think God doesn't value human relationships? You ever thought about that? God described a human being with God as alone. And God looked at that and said, that's not good. For all of you that are caught in the unfortunate trap of bad religion that tells you that you've got to continue tiptoeing, stretching, arching your back, fawning for the heaven's attention, this story should relieve you greatly. Because the Bible says that when God looked at him and said, you're alone, this is after walking with him in the cool of the day for... Only God knows how long. God looked at him and said, I'm going to fix this. And instead of making him more erudite, more esoteric, more wise, more sage, instead of lifting him up until finally his head, his soul stretched into the heavens and he could communicate with the divine more effectively, that's not the way God fixed it, Missy. The Bible says God fixed it by causing a deep sleep to come over him. And he took out of the essence of the human, which was created in the image of God, out of divine essence in the human, another human. And when those two humans woke up, they didn't stretch their hands out and sing a praise chorus to Jesus. The Bible said they looked at one another and God sat down and said, now that's very good. I like that. Man with God, alone, not good. Two human beings together, God smiled and said, that's what we need. 